needs to know that it is a uh, registered trademark and that we cannot um, use it without uh, approval. The University of Wisconsin Stout has its own branding. These are their traditional colors and those primary colors that we work with. You can have complementary colors or those secondary colors that deal with that. So any type of print brochure or website can mix those colors along with that. And here is the Boy Scouts typefaces that they have, um, the primary, secondary, tertiary. And so when working with that, we need to make sure we use the right fonts to represent the Boy Scouts of America. And you know those scout colors that go along with it and in depending on if we're doing a brochure or newsletter, or if we're designing a website, there are specifics along with the Boy Scout layout that says how we'd have our red in our background, how we use the white logo, and they give suggested and recommendations when you check out that Boy Scout uh, website, and I recommend you do so. Another on their Facebook, exactly what the background is, the people representing that, the profile description so that we have everything matching. So when you see a Boy Scouts of America site, it all looks the same. And here's another one, and look at that website design. Now when we would deal with these graphics, they might be photos, they might be, uh, which are considered raster images, they might be that Boy Scout logo, which is a vector. And when we talk about vector, it would be using Adobe Illustrator to create that, and that would have a mathematical formula that I could stretch the logos without distortion or loss of quality. But my bitmap are rastered are my photographs. Those are made by pixels. Line art just says it's either black or white. A lot of times pen and ink drawings can be considered a line art. And this is one of the Boy Scout requirements that you understand that. Now with vector they can have four color that cyan magenta yellow black as we looked at last uh, session. Or it could have the specialty green, specialty brown, and specialty tan. So vector artwork is a mathematical formula to create points on a path. Now when we talk about those raster images, as we looked with our microscopes last week, we can see that the original image is a continuous tone image. But when I put those dots of cyan, magenta, yellow, black together, it's depending on my resolution. And so I see that depending on the quality, my resolution starts to distort the image. Now some make this look like a cartoon or comic strip when they bring those big, what we call halftone dots together. And there are some additional handouts along with that in your uh, packet to take a look at. Binding and finishing brings our text, our graphics, and our images together, depending on how we're going to view that. Binding and finishing means for a print piece, whether it's a perfect binding like a magazine or a booklet, whether it is a case binding or a wire like your spiral notebook you might take notes in for school, whether it has two staples in the spine which we call saddle stitch. There might be loops, there might be a comb that comes off and it has these large uh, fingers that go through die cut holes, or it might just be a metal ring like your three ring binder. And again, there's other types of clasps and case binding which would be your hardback book. Now, we do have these different types and it did understand in the Boy Scout regulations to complete this badge that you try to look at samples and we did have some and I'll be glad to show you those next session. Now when we die cut, we know that we might cut out holes along with that. So as we take a look here, we see that it is cut out of the paper. So you might see this in a greeting card, and you might see it in some information when you start looking up some information online that uh, talks about die cutting. And it might have uh, a cutout that goes all the way through, or it might be cut, uh, cut partially through. When we looked at those stickers and labels last week, if you notice the die cut shape allowed us to have a circle or a rectangle, and then it left the backer sheet, so that is a form of die cutting for commercial graphics. We then have a folder, and when we take a look at the folder that goes along with it, let's see if I can get this one to work. And you see it folding the sheets of paper along with that. And so as the sheets come down, it might buckle or knife fold. Let's hope this one's not as loud. And I'm told somewhere about 30 seconds it comes in. There we go. And you see it come down a belt and hit a buckle and then knife fold in. 
and the sheets come out folded. And some of the students did show you that last week when we were working. And so then we have some embossing or finishing. We know that it might have the paper that is pushed through a die, but doesn't break through and cut it out. It just gives it a raised finish. If you rub your hand over your money on a dollar bill, that is a debossing and it gives it the effect um, and doesn't puff up. But we see a lot of this on greeting cards and um, different beverage bottles along with that foil stamping. And the foil might be a rainbow, it might be a gold, silver. So we have other options along with that foil stamping to go along with it. I look forward to meeting with you next week and uh, hopefully that you'll look up some of these words online and see some other websites. Thank you. Along with bringing your questions.